So from 1995 to 2006, Spain's economy flourished. However, since 2007, the global economic downturn had a serious impact on Spain's economy, among other things due to the exposure to real estate. Um, lately, however, we've seen a notable increase in interest from investors. You've heard it um, in previous conferences. We've also heard it um, yesterday and today. Um, so to start off, Elena, I mean, you're seeing a wide spectrum of deals going through, coming through your offices. Um, and probably one of the most important or interesting question is, is the Spanish hotel investment market giving signs of a recovery? Okay, well, that's quite a broad question, I think. Um, <laughs> when, if we look back to 2013, um, we, we actually saw less number of rooms being exchanged, but we saw larger volumes, so more money uh, uh, being involved in deals. So it's estimated, we have different statistics and depending on what you look at, but we estimate about 800 million euros of hotel investment in, in Spain last year. Um, we, what we did see, um, a lot of investments of buying buildings to reconvert into, uh, into hotels, uh, lots so in, in, in Barcelona, for example, um, and also Madrid. Um, Two large developments that we see now is the Agbar Tower that was sold for price varies who you speak with, but about 150 million is pro the approximate price uh, for that investment. Highly leveraged, though. That will be converted possibly into Hyatt, which would help to reposition the area where that building is located. Um, and that was some Latin American investors into, into that deal. And then we also see Canalejas in Madrid, which is, which is a building that has been, it's like a, really seven buildings, a block in, in Madrid, central Madrid, very good, well located, that's been on the market for many years. And finally it was sold um, to Villarmir, a Spanish investor. Um, and he has the intention to convert it into four seasons and, uh, and high high level uh, retail um, in, in the block. So that will hopefully <coughs> also help to reposition that area that for now um, isn't quite a five star destination, central Madrid, but with that development, we hope to see a, an improvement of that. Um, and that together with the W in Barcelona, um, that explains the high level of volume that we saw last year. Uh, w Barcelona was sold to the QIA at the Qatar investors for about 200 million euros. What we see in the beginning of 2014 was a huge interest, um, probably something that you all noticed here on the conference, if not before that. And many investors looking at Spain today. Um, so we expect to see further investment coming in. Uh, on one hand, we see the private equity funds that are looking for more opportunistic uh, deals. We also see many hotel operators, um, international ones, that see an opportunity in Spain today. As um, previously in Spain, historically, mostly we, we've seen a lot of local hotel operators doing the deals, buying hotels um, and growing in that manner. Often that was leveraged, and today with the limited credit, um, they have more difficulties in buying. So that's also where international investors see an opportunity. So we, we expect to see more international investment coming into Spain buying hotels. Okay, thank you. And um, well, obviously fueling this, uh, Mariano, would you be able to, um, to shed some light on the measures that have been taken by the Spanish authorities in order to, to support and for further aid the interest from investors to, to be investing into Spain? Um, oh yes, the Spanish economy had to address the uh, imbalances accumulated over previous years to the crisis and, and the Spanish government has focus his activity in three main objectives. First is restoring public finances. Uh, remember that during the first quarter of, uh, of uh, 2012, um, Spain was requested several times to uh, ask for a bailout, and, uh, and many economic uh, analysts consider the Eurozone nearly broken, or uh, at least uh, it was revived the idea of uh, the two Europe uh, to speed Europe within the uh, Eurozone countries. Second, um, uh, reinforcing and cleaning up the financial system. The lack of confidence in the Spanish economy came, came from the conviction that the Spain, uh, Spanish government had no sufficient funds to uh, handle 
the eventual collapse of the financial system that uh, um, uh, which had and still has a very uh, significant exposure to the real estate market. And finally, the third, the third urgent need was to carry out uh, um, a structural reforms uh, to boost the potential growth of the, of the Spanish economy, uh, basically by um, implementing uh, liberalization measures and with a deep labor market reform. I think that the, these structural reforms um, has been implemented until now in many sectors of the economy, energy, uh, uh, education, local government, but in my view, the two most important points for the hotel market are the financial system, in a certain extent, and, and uh, definitely the, the reform of the labor market. Okay, so, so when we're talking about the, the, the reforms that have done for the, specifically for the hotel sector, um, and then let's, let's look at the financial side. So which are the, um, which are the reforms that have been taken by, by the Spanish authorities addressing the financial system? Um, in, the, in the last couple of years, the transformation of the, of the financial system in Spain has been tremendous. Uh, everything started on, on 2012, the Spanish government and the European Union um, executed a memorandum of understanding, uh, giving access to the Kingdom of Spain to uh, uh, the European stability mechanism, which uh, meant the granting of, uh, of a credit facility of 100 billion euros. Uh, of such amount, uh, I think 41.3 41 billion euros has already been used in, uh, in granting aids to the financial institutions. But one of the commitments uh, assumed by the Spanish government um, under the Memorandum of Understanding was the incorporation of a company partially owned by the state to manage uh, real estate uh, assets coming from these financial entities that were either acquired or helped by the government with such funds. Uh, this entity name is Sareb, uh, is known as the bad bank. That is not actually a, a bad bank, not, not even a bad, nor bank, is, is, a, is a management company of uh, real estate assets. And this entity acquired from uh, these financial entities for a closed assets and credits and loans granted to real estate promoters, non-performing non loans, with an average discount of 50%. Uh, so basically, Sareb, um, uh, has uh, taken 100 billion euros in assets at the face value with an average of 50%. Some of these assets are hotel assets, uh, definitely, which uh, most of them were used as security of uh, loans and credits granted to, uh, to developers. Um, the purpose of Sareb is obviously to take these uh, toxic assets out of the balance sheets of the financial entities and, um, and put them in the market at the best conditions during a period of 15 years um, without the pressure that the entities had, um, which were strangling the activity of the banking system because the, this, this banking system had a lot of pressure with the provisions that uh, does not permit to, to function with these toxic assets. Um, it's important to note that the um, privately owned Spanish bank, not only um, the largest Santander or BBVA, but also medium-sized banks as uh, CaixaBank or Bank Inter or Popular or other banks, um, did not need assistance from, uh, from the government, but have dealt with uh, their own toxic assets uh, most of them creating uh, their own real estate companies uh, where they have contributed uh, their foreclosed real estate assets, both uh, retail and, and commercial. And uh, well, recently we have seen that this process has finished with a, with a sale of these, of these uh, companies to specialized funds. Um, so these stress transactions in the hotel market have mainly came from uh, from the sales of portfolios of perform, performing loans, not performing loans, so sub-performing loans, uh, guaranteed by mortgages over hotel assets, which have therefore changed hands from uh, uh, local banks, from Sareb or from international banks as well, uh, to uh, international distressed companies. Um, transactions where banks have uh, foreclosure their mortgages have been very few, um, 
normally banks uh, doesn't like to take the reins of uh, hotel business. And um, in some these of these few cases, uh, normally they have used the, the services of uh, boutiques for uh, boutiques for uh, the temporary management of these of these uh, hotel assets. Um, in the meantime, the, the bank is looking for new operators or or uh, try to sell this this hotel. But then, surely, when when acquiring debt, there's more risks attached to this uh, as opposed to just buying the asset. There's more there's more complexity. Is there is there something, Elena, that you could elaborate on this? Yeah, about the risk buying debt. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we we'll all understand uh, that buying debt, most of these that would buy debt, they buy it in, because they have the final objective to get the asset. Um, and you have to go through often a, a procedure of, of foreclosure. And, and, and that, that can be lengthy and it can, be, uh, it can have certain risk attached to it. So it's important in, uh, uh, if someone goes in and buy debt that it makes a... To, to make a serious analysis, not only on the asset, but the, the general situation of the loan. Um, and I think also just tying back to the situation of the Spanish banks, um, one hand, Sareb, as you said, it's not, it's, it's not a bank and it's not bad, uh, but um, they have a portfolio of, 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 of hotel assets, which are not good assets, and they have a portfolio of non-performing loans. And these non-performing loans, some of them will be converted into Hotel assets being owned by by the by Sareb, so that's that's a conversion that we are that we are seeing. And for investors, it's interesting to to keep a hand on Sareb, seeing what's happening there, and see what assets are coming into their portfolio. Um, but it's also Sareb as well as Spanish banks. Many of them they're a bit taken aback by the number of assets that they have to take care of. So that. What we see, many of the Spanish banks, although they have done their write-offs necessary in order to make being on the market for selling the debt, um, they have not quite decided the strategy they should uh, take for these debts. So um, for some of them, it's just too early to sell off debt. They don't know if they want to sell it. Maybe they just want to keep it on, uh, restructure. Um, they want to wait for the asset, they actually buy the asset, and once the asset is on their balance sheet, they, are, they, they have more freedom of doing what they need to do with the asset. It could be a refurbishment, changing the management, um, closing it down, converting it into residential. I mean, they have many different options. So it's, it's not easy to approach the banks and give them a good solution and, 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 and um, take in uh, and catching this opportunity for buying Spanish debt in order to end up being a hotel owner. It's, it's not an easy, you know, you just go there, buy a piece of debt and you're happy, you know. But it is definitely an opportunity for investors that are prepared to go through that process. So it also means there's more, there's more, it's more that there's debt available to be bought rather than the actual individual assets. That's yeah, we, we, we still see a price gap. I think anyone here that, I don't know if you hear, well, anyone here that has been trying to buy hotels or have bought hotels in Spain, often you see there's still a price gap between what the sellers believe the hotel is worth and what the buyers believe it's worth. And that gap can be kind of solved by buying debt because the banks are more flexible. Right. Well, I mean, Spain is not the only country, of course, that's uh, created a bad, uh, a bad bank, if you like, as, as you want to call it. We've seen many other European countries that have um, created such a structure um, and, and therefore selling these to various investment vehicles. So, um, Angel, on, um, I think it was on Saturday the news announced that there was, uh, for instance, the, the investor George Soros. He will be participating in the, uh, in the investment vehicle um, that, that you're looking to, to set up uh, called Hispania. Um, to, to, with a focus on to, uh, onto Spanish real estate. Um, you also have the, the Carré portfolio, which has got 10 assets um, throughout in key cities throughout, um, throughout the globe. Um, so fr from an investor's point of view, um, could you explain to us a couple of points, for instance, I mean, the, the, the timing or perhaps the, the interest at the moment that, is, that has uh, come to Spain? Um, how also, the, uh, for instance, such an investment vehicle, how is that structured? Um, is it... Ex is it what we commonly know as a REIT, or are there other ambiguities around that that might differentiate it slightly from a REIT? Um, and w w what are your views in terms of the Spain, if you, if you like, maybe perhaps compared to other European markets from an investment point of view? Uh, well, just for uh, as a brief uh, definition of what Azora is for people that doesn't know what we are, we are an investment and fund management company. We manage around 3,000 uh, million uh, euros in, in assets today. 
and uh, until now, investors uh, were Spaniards. Bank institution, family offices, I mean investors joining, joining our, our company. Since the beginning of the year, we have closed two significant deals, one with Goldman Sachs, together with us, because we normally co-invest, uh, of around 200 million euros in, in acquiring residential from the Madrid uh, municipality. Mm -hmm. The Edima portfolio with 3,000 houses for rent. And then we have bought with Fortress a significant uh, debt package from Sarep that you were speaking about. So this is a, a given proof of the fact that Spain is in the, in the point of view of all uh, international investors. Uh, the press has been speaking a lot about this Hispania. This, they have been speaking more than I can do today. Uh, but if you just read the press and you just go to the web of the Comisión Nacional del Mercado de Valores, you can obtain information that I'm not allowed to give you today. But the fact is that yes, there is, uh, there is uh, appetite for Spain. We have partners uh, joining us in investments in real estate in Spain. The press has been mentioning a figure of 500 million euro uh, for this uh, Sosimi, which is Hispania. And uh, the main purpose of Azora will continue being investing in, in uh, real estate, focusing in Spain, and this real estate will have the normal mix-up that has always been, being a part of these hotels, a part of these residential, and a part of these offices. You said, why Spain? Uh, for everybody that has been attending to the, to the general sessions and, and some of the panels today, you have seen that uh, most of the speakers differentiate Europe and uh, there is an area that they call Southern Europe where Spain, Portugal, Italy and Greece are. Some of them include France as well. And if you look to, to the uh, slides in that presentation, especially to one I don't know who, how many of you have seen that. There was a weather, a weather uh, chart about the world with different countries with small icons on whether there was raining or it was sunny or what about that. If you look to Southern Europe, the only one without rain was Spain, meaning that Italy and Greece uh, uh, are today slightly out of scope for the international investors. Uh, I have to say that probably it's because uh, the government in Spain today are giving clear signals of a straight path uh, that has been followed and to be followed in the future in reforms, in consolidation of the economy, and this gives comfort to the investors. And on the other hand, uh, everybody sees opportunities uh, because of the, the fact that you were mentioned about the banks being every day a little more accessible in, in, uh, in closing transactions. and. Uh, I am convinced that we will see transactions with the banks uh, in the short future. And all these components create this appetite for, for investing in Spain today. Uh, and you mentioned um, a Sosimi. Is that, that, that's exactly that's it's, a REIT? It's, it's like a REIT. It's the right. same thing. Yeah, you just go to the, to the dictionary, uh, it's English, Spanish, and you see REIT, Sosimi. Right. Sosimi, REIT. It's the same thing. So, um, so, so John, perhaps uh, maybe from, a, from an operator brand point of view, um, um, I, I know that Meli has used in the past has used the bal your balance sheet in order to, to acquire deals and, and increase the presence within markets. Um, could you explain a little bit uh, what the what kind of investment models you, uh, Melia has used in the past in Spain and what you could be contemplating going forward? Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like just to, to make you an introduction on our company. Melia Hotels uh, International is the biggest and the um, biggest hotel management company in Spain. Uh, as a resort management company is uh, also one of the, the biggest worldwide. We have around 350 hotels worldwide in 40 countries. Uh, we started 60 years ago in Spain, so our base is mainly Spain. Um, actually, uh, there is, um, I mean, looking at and answering to your question, uh, we have grown as an owner company, and 60 years ago and 40 years ago, we bought our own hotels. But now we are now uh, seeing that there is appetite for in international investors to go into the market. And what we are trying now to, to focus is on in growing uh, with management agreements or with lower capital uh, intensive uh, structures, which allow us to, to, you know, to, to, to benefit and investors uh, from our operational experience in, the, in Spain. 
I'll, I'll take a, I'll, I'll, I'll talk later about the locations and because I mean that's an important point also to mention where we see is the, the, the potential opportunities in which markets and so on. But for you to, to, to also to understand how we have grown recently, we are now focused on, on, on doing new projects in Spain, uh, growing in a joint venture in which we put our um, assets and then we regenerate and renovate uh, hotels and, and areas, trying to, you know, to, to make new products that attract uh, the tourists that we usually work with. I mean, the important point of Spain is that uh, we have been the third, uh, the third um, tourist destination worldwide. You know, even though that the, the situation right now with Africa and with other countries uh, is not easy and we benefit from that, uh, we believe and we are truly sure that the resort destination and the resort market in, in Spain is going to be always in a good and a stable in a stable situation. That's why we are trying to, to grow and we are looking to, 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 to see if there is investors coming to, to see and to, to, to push for new opportunities for us to manage. Does this have a particular focus on uh, potential on, on resort destinations or uh, from, a, from, a, from your say from your pool of investors that, that you could go hand in hand with? Depending, we have that uh, we, we detect that there are mainly, of course, the, the, the investors are looking for secure uh, cities, yeah. mainly Madrid, especially Barcelona, and I'll, I'll talk later about that. But there is also an important portion of investors looking to the resort destinations. You know, we have been uh, like for 60 or 50 or 60 years one of the mm, best locations in the, in the resorts uh, destinations in Europe, of course with the Balearic Island and the Canary Island. And we have a show, you know, that the market is in there and, you know, we can, we can, even the situation is not good for Spain, you know, the business is in there and we can uh, manage very well the, the properties and have benefits and returns on, on investments. Uh, well, let, let's, as well, let's perhaps um, let's dive into a little bit about the, um, the, the, the performing statistics, if you like, of, of Spain and how, how um, um, well, how, do, does the operating statistics of Spain mirror the interest, if you like, that we've seen so far by investors uh, from your point of view with, uh, well, with, the, with all the properties that you have throughout Spain? Um, could you give us maybe a little bit of an ind indication of particular markets, changes of rev par? Um, maybe we can look at, um, let's say, the, the various business segments, so urban versus uh, resort, or maybe the, the demand generators, national versus international. How, how has that landscape changed over time? And, um, how do you see that going forward in the next couple of years? Uh um, from the best, uh, my perspective market, uh, or my, 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 my perception is that there are three different locations and three different kind of uh, oh, I mean, uh, potential investment opportunities. One is, is Madrid and Barcelona, as I said. They are very different between them. I mean, Barcelona is, is a city that is working pretty well with a lot of international tourists coming to, to, the, to the city. It's a well-balanced well business between uh, corporate and leisure uh, and the, the, the perception and you know, the, the international exposure of the, of the demand is clearly something that benefits the hotel. So uh, in our hotels in Barcelona, uh, the, the red part uh, last year, uh, 2013 from 2012, grow by 3.3%. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly because, of course, uh, as I said, you know, this is a very well-balanced market and uh, the, the destination has shown that it's strong and we are looking uh, and with some investors and uh, potentially with, uh, with joint ventures and with uh, developers uh, for new opportunities in, in Barcelona. Then you have Madrid in which we have a lot of exposure. We have uh, around 22 hotels. And Madrid is suffering uh, a lot, mainly because uh, the international tourists are not uh, going there. The uh, number of tourists went down last year by 5% international. Uh, the Barajas airport is not, is not uh, performing as it uh, used to be. Uh, Easy yet half left the hub in, in Madrid. And you know there is a lot of air traffic connection that uh, went to, to another um, stop. They fly into Madrid. So it's a little bit of, of, of everything. Also, is you know, the Madrid has a lot of. Uh, it's, it's very seasonal, and what what happens is, you know, you have three uh, during summertime, like four, three, four months, that is very difficult to 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 fill the fill full the hotels. So it has been very a very difficult time for Madrid. Nevertheless, I think 
for investors is a very good moment because uh, it's the right moment to buy if you find opportunities because the other thing is you don't find opportunities as easy as you may think. Yep. The good opportunities are not in, in, in place. And then you have, this is Madrid and Barcelona, then you have a mix, a hi hybrid cities, which means pretty well the, the corporate and the leisure, yep. like for, can be Alicante, like can be Palma de Mallorca, and those destinations we are also doing pretty well. Uh, you know, we have positive ref parts from, from last year. And, uh, and then you have the Canary Island, which is a separate uh, destination, and it's working also pretty well. Uh, our figures, I mean, we achieved the, our best red part in, in the story of our company mm -hmm. last year, and it was, uh, we increased 2013 from 2012, the, red part, the increase of the red part was 5.5% 5 5, 5 increase, and we were 10% over the top, the top level of the, of the red part we had before in 2007. So okay. which means that the Canary Islands is a destination that when something happened in, in Africa, in, in other countries, you know, we benefit a lot. And yep. the problem now as a company that, that for us is there is not a lot of, no, there are not a, a lot of investment opportunities. The ones that are on, on the market are very expensive, which means that, you know, you have to, of course, to, to, to have a, a very good result in order to, 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 to see you can find an investor because also the investors are looking to find a management company that gives guarantees and this is something that of course with the line and the the, the, the strategy that you we are following with management agreement it doesn't match at all this is more the, the more three i mean the main three business um, markets we are looking at and I mean, you mentioned that it's a it's a good opportunity at the moment to to look for, for well for for investment opportunities uh, predominantly, I would assume that the, uh, the, the operational performance of Spain is down because of the national demand, but assumably this would, would, this would increase as, as time goes forward and, and things start to kickstart again within the, the, na within the economy. Exactly. In 2014, we envisaged that the domestic um, demand is going to start to grow yep. because right now it went down, but you know the balance was uh, that the, 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 the international demand was higher so at the end, the balance was positive for us. For us. The, only, the only concern is Madrid, to be honest with you. I mean, Madrid has been suffering a lot, and this is the only city that I can see, and secondary cities, of course, because secondary cities depend a lot on the, the, on, the, on the national demand, domestic demand, which is hopefully, let's cross fingers, this year, you know, it's going to at least to stabilize and, and start to, to grow up. Uh, internationally, of course, Spain remains to be one of the top destinations globally um, to, to, to go for leisure and, and of course, also for, for business. Um, so, so, Elena, maybe, um, I mean, given the overview that, uh, that John has, has given us over for, for the, um, how Spain is behaving, could you tell us how you anticipate um, if we will continue to see opportunity, investment opportunities emerge and potentially where we might be able to see these? Mm. Yeah, where, where will the opportunities be? Um, well, I think it's, uh, John had made a really good summary of the situation. Um, I think Madrid, we would expect a recovery in Madrid um, in the next couple of years. I think if the rev for hasn't grown in Madrid in the next two years, I think someone has to come and shoot me because it, 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 it just doesn't make any sense uh, looking at a rev par drop from 2011 that wasn't at a good level or 20 to 25% in the capital of the country. It just doesn't, it, it, it's, it can't stabilize on that level. Um, and it's, so far this year, we're very early in the year, but January has shown a positive growth in occupancy. Um, and it's, 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 we still have decent demand in Madrid, it's just that we have a lot of hotels to fill, and fill up, and there's a very strong price competition. But once occupancy is, is, will improve, uh, we expect the, the rates also to start improving, and the, and the hoteliers that are in Madrid, many of them that I speak with, uh, they have changed the strategy and they're increasing prices. So we do expect a recovery this year. Um, don't dare to sp speak about numbers. Um, I can let someone really do that, but, but, um, but we do expect to see a, a recovery in Madrid. So that, but that doesn't mean that you can buy it cheap now because it's lower rev, rev parts. So, so opportunities are difficult to find and that's why many investors buy buildings to convert into hotels because it's usually easier deals and have bet better, better yield opportunities. We see a lot of resort opportunities, um, resort hotels. 
uh, that are run down, they need capex, the, the, the owners don't have the capacity because they can't find the credit and the loans to do so, so that they sell, it, sell them off just to someone that has the money to do the capex necessary um, and to reposition these hotels. That's a very clear opportunity. Um, in, in, in most of the Spanish resort destinations. Again, when you look at the rev pass on these locations, the ones that depend on international tourists, they're doing great. The ones that depend on domestic tourists, they're not doing so great. So um, depending if someone wants to opt for a recovery, then go for a Roquetas de Mar and those kind of destination. And if you want something that you believe will be more stable and it's already on a good level and will continue on that good level, then go to Mallorca or um, places like Benidorm uh, and the like. Okay, no, thank you. But it seems like there, is, there are opportunities. It's, uh, it's about having the right market intelligence. It's about um, well, having a flexible and creative approach, um, as well as the, the adequate reforms from the, from the local authorities in order to, to unlock these opportunities. Um, so, Mariano, you earlier touched you touched on the uh, on the on the reforms, if you like, that the Spanish authorities are doing, and we looked at the from the financial side what is being done. Um, you also mentioned from the labor from the labor aspect that there's been various changes there. Um, could you tell us a little bit what what those changes might have included within the labor market? Mm. Well, yes, the, the Spanish government approved on 2012 um, a revolutionary reform of the labor market. Um, uh, the Spanish labor system was uh, inherited from the old regime, uh, paternalist regime, that provide employees, provide workers with a very protective legal framework. Um, these historical vested rights, practically unchanged until until now, have been have made very difficult to reduce labor cost in hard times when with no other alternatives that uh, dismissal and payments of very, very high severance compensations. Um, we are no cases of uh, hotel operators, hotel managers facing an affordable labor cost, but tied by uh, collective bargaining agreements that were negotiated in, in more prosperous times, but that are not, are impossible to maintain when occupancy and prices fall. Um, Mm, this, this labor reform uh, during 2012 uh, and first half of 2013 is true that has been uh, mainly applied to adjust labor related costs basically through uh, collective layoffs. Uh, but um, in the second half of uh, the 2013, um, we have seen that following this first destructive effect that increase the unemployment rate of Spain and to up to uh, an acceptable 26%. Um, the companies are um, now tending to uh, implement the internal flexibility mechanisms for a scene in, the, in this new law with uh, in general terms for operators. I have, um, I say three, three matters. Um, well, in terms of remuneration, this is always an important point for, for all, every hotel manager. The, the company is, is, uh, is uh, entitled to disregard the minimum salary stipulated in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, provided that it can evidence the existence of objective economic, technical, organizational, or production circumstances to justify the adoption of such measures. So um, another, another point of the labor reform is, uh, is the working time, uh, the possibility of the company to uh, unilaterally distribute the, um, up to 10% uh, of, the, of the time of the normal journey of employee um, that can be used for uh, peak seasons or peak times. And, and the third, I think most important point of the, this labor reform for the hotel managers is uh, inherent to a functional and occupational mobility of uh, these employees. Uh, this, uh, this reform allows an employee to, prefer, to perform multiple, multiple functions. It's uh, strange, but was not possible on previously to that reform. Um, this regulation has put an end to uh, a recurrent problem uh, in the sector, which is that an employee was not allowed to perform other related functions 
uh, without changing his category uh, in the collective agreement and, uh, and therefore his salary. So uh, this amendment, this last amendment to the collective, uh, uh, this amendment has been reflected in the collective uh, bargaining agreement of the hotel sector at a country level um, made at the end of, uh, of, the, of December 2013. Uh, and uh, it has included a wide range of professional group uh, so employees can now attend to various tasks without uh, involving a change of category with a subsequent wage increase. Um, so this reform has not stopped. We uh, think that in the next, in the next months we'll see um, new, new amendments to the, to the labor, to the labor uh, law. Probably we'll be focused on, uh, on um, um, reduction of uh, severance payments and, uh, and also probably in the um, uh, unification of contracts under a single modality of, of contracts. So in conclusion, what this labor reform has provided the managers of hotels a very flexible and agile um, framework to, to uh, be able to um, uh, manage the uh, human resources of a company. It has needed a change in the in the mentality of unions and workers, and uh, and also it requests also the moderation of the company in in the in the using of these new rights that the uh, the reform has granted to them. Um, it's true, actually, it's true that uh, the recent resolutions from uh, from uh, the competent the competent labor body or from labor courts have uh, moderated the, the rights of the, of the entrepreneur to, uh, to use these unilateral rights. In any case, Spain is no longer uh, a country with uh, a rigid labor system and uh, has opened many possibilities to, uh, to uh, adapt the workforce to the needs and characteristics of, uh, of uh, the business. Okay, so well, so I mean, it seems there's there's flexibility within the local authorities in order to change the the, the, the labor market, if you like, um, adaptability. Um, keeping that in mind, um, Angel, uh, the, these must have been obviously um, uh, well, they must have been important uh, components for your consideration, obviously for Spain. Um, could you could you let us know a little bit what is it that you're looking for um, from the hotel industry and well, particularly if you like from the operators and the brands. Um, to ins to assist you in unlocking um, potential opportunities with the well with creativity flexibility adaptation in mind. Okay, uh, we are not uh, hotel managers. Uh, we need uh, hotel operators. So whenever we approach a deal, uh, one of the first issues that we consider is: uh, Do we have the appropriate operator for this hotel? Do we have the appropriate brand for this hotel? If we don't have a yes answer to both of them, we will not uh, approach the investment because, uh, as I said, we are not uh, hotel operators. Uh, we are quite flexible in the relationship with the operators because we have the experience of every kind of uh, relationship with them. We have, uh, in Washington, we have a pure management agreement. In, uh, here in Berlin, we have almost a pure management agreement. We have lease agreements in other places. So we understand uh, the, the market, we understand the operators, so we are, I wouldn't say that we, we are an easy uh, partner in a sense that we will accept whatever an operator puts on the table, but at least we are an understanding partner and we consider that uh, we have to work, to, to, to teamwork in making an investment succeed. Uh, I was uh, previously in the panel just across the street uh, that was about the relationship between owners, operators, and, and lenders. And they said that uh, the main thing, uh, they asked to, to, the, to the panelists to mention three items that they consider crucial for the relationship between all of them. And uh, the most common uh, mention was uh, trust, and trust, and trust. And I don't fully agree with that because uh, uh, trust has to be built up uh, what we consider that is necessary in the relationship with an operator is clarity. And whenever it's clarity, whenever everybody knows what the other party is uh, willing to have, uh, of course you need confidence in the, in the company you are marrying with. 
uh, but whenever it's clarity, the life is, is, is here. Yep. So uh, we are, uh, in Spain, there is a, a formula that is not uh, practically developed today, which is uh, the triangle operator, brand, and, and owner. You normally sign a contract with a brand, and the brand uh, will take care of everything in the, in the project. We are looking to, to this possibility for new investments, to, to have uh, an operator that uh, will make pressure in, uh, in the brand and at the same time will focus only in the management of the hotel and to have the strongest possible brand to, to market and to distribute uh, your rooms. So this is, this is a system that uh, we are contemplating as a possibility for the future. But as I said, we understand what uh, an operator is and we need them to help us and what a brand is. Well, perhaps, uh, John, uh, f from the operator point of view, how, how would you accommodate, uh, for instance, um, you know, how, how would you work in terms of the, um, or how would you work in terms of the flexibility to, uh, to adapt or to, to meet the needs of the, of the likes of uh, Athoda? <laughs> that's a, that's a, uh, <laughs> that's a, I mean, the most important thing is uh, we need to, to, when we have an investor and we have an opportunity, we need to understand was the requirements of, the, of that investors. I mean, it's easy to say that we are trying to, of course, growing with management agreements, but we, ha we have been, hist uh, historically, we have been very flexible in the sense that if an owner needs a an, lease agreement, uh, because for any reason, for the finance, for whatever, uh, we can, you know, m can make a lease agreement, variable lease agreement, but I think the future and the good opportunity right now for Spain with all the, I mean, the potential opportunities that will be on the table, uh, I hope so, is that, you know, we need to uh, attract investors that understand what's, the, what's a management agreement, because at the end of the day, what actually happened in Spain is it's quite difficult to the owner to explain them, you know, the value to have a brand in order for them to, 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 to give us a, or any, any, any other hotel management agreement uh, the, the property to manage. And in that sense, I, I, I believe that, you know, with uh, those um, opportunities that will be, you know, uh, on the table in the, in the near future, then if the investors understand what's the meaning of uh, having a good brand under a management agreement basis and, you know, to obtain all the um, good results that you, can, you, could, you could obtain with uh, having management agreements against the lease agreement, then you know that will be a very good situation uh, for, for all of us. Also, historically, I mean, as I said, uh, we can very flexible. Uh, we signed uh, last year uh, lease agreements, variable lease agreements, because of course uh, our focus now is growing with the management agreements. And um, but there is another formula where I think is going to is going to be something interesting as well is that you know we could have these management agreements with minimum warranties in allocations, of course, where we believe uh, the projects and the, 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 the hotels are, um, you know, very well uh, located and, you know, with a lot of perfect potential. And because we are also very picky in, in, in going through the locations where we have and we know that there is a potential for, for, the, for, the, for the hotel as a business. Okay. If I may, just yes, because I have yeah. the the advantage of having been in uh, in John's company for 30 years before him, <laughs> so, uh, and, and I understand what you said now. Uh, lease agreements or management agreement depends a lot of the profile of the investor. If you are a patrimonialist investor that wants to, to hold the asset for your life, uh, you will, of course, uh, prefer to, to have a lease agreement because this will give you security, you don't have any problem, you are not affected by cycles, it's much comfortable. But for, let's say, professional investors, uh, a lease agreement in some cases will reduce the value of your asset because the valuation of your asset will be limited to the 60% of the projected GOP that you are prepared to pay as a lease agreement. So this will reduce the value. So it's, it's more attractive a management agreement, provided that you get uh, not the warranties, as you were mentioning, but the proper securities in the sense that you need to have very strong uh, performance warranties and you need to probably have a preferred owner uh, return that will cover in some way uh, by uh, subsidizing your fees to, to this return, your financial uh, needs. But uh, 
today, I, and, and the entrance of, of, the, of the international investors in Spain uh, will help to that, will help you and, uh, and, and the companies like yours. Uh, today, the, the perception of a management agreement is, is quite more open than it was before, when you were dependent mainly on family offices, on, on individual owners, people that they, they, their first aiming was security, 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 and that, that's why they, they were looking for lease. And about flexibility, thank you. Uh, we, we hope so, <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, there is something that uh, you didn't mention. That but it's, it's a general uh, it's a general layout in, in, in all management companies. The, the standards, the brand standards, is something that sometimes is a burden for the investor. But again, we understand that whenever we approach uh, a, a project, we contemplate the, the need of capex to, to adapt to the brand that you, we consider that will be the most suitable for this property, and, and uh, you have to add. To, to your investment amount, uh, probably in some cases 30,000 uh, euros, uh, 40,000 euros to the price per room uh, because of these brand uh, requirements. You know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And of course, the most important thing is, as you explained, I mean, if, you, if you understand the management agreement, then you are capable to say how much money you need to put on, the, on your asset, of course, to see that you know you will need to, 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 to or you will have the, the best benefit for the for the for the opportunity of course well I, I think unfortunately we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to come close uh, close to a close but um, I mean just to summarize it seems as if uh, there's I mean, we've had a lot of positivity there's there's the there's the reforms from the from the from the local Spanish authorities there's the in terms of the financial system or the, the Sareb and the, if you like the bad bank we have the, the the labor market. We've discussed um, well. Where, where what is the what are the what is currently what are the the operating results? Um, where what are the differences between the markets? Um, what is the investor's profile? Um, and also, where do we think we can actually see opportunities? And um, well, the key part is of is is well, it seems to be the flexibility and and the the ability to work with each other to unlock the opportunities and to well, to sit down at the table and 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 understand how how this can be done. Um, before I asked you the question um, to raise your hands if there's any interest, uh, if you believe right now there could be an opportunity to invest in Spain, just to measure that, that change after the last 45, 50 minutes. If I could ask you to raise your hands if you think that there could be now, a, if it's changed your perception. Well, More than two. <laughs> yeah. And are there any questions that, um, that we could address the panel? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. to everybody else but not to Spain. Now, there, was, there was just a general denial that that was the case. So the delay, the procedurals and, and uh, reforms came quite late. That put Spain a little bit behind the curve of the recovery that, that's already underway in Northern Europe. What more can be done now to close that gap, to get Spain up to speed with, with the rest of us? Well, I told you at the end of, uh, of my comment of the labor reform that we are waiting for uh, more reforms in the, in the labor in the labor system. Um, definitely, we we believe that uh, a substantial reduction of the severance severance payment in the event of unfair dismissal. Um, uh, second, uh, is a um, simplicity of the of the contractual models that the, the 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 manager have to use. There are I don't know 20, 25 kinds of, of labor contracts, and uh, they they probably try to find a, a, a single morality of of of, um, of employment contract. Uh, obviously, probably they will try to. Uh, to put pressure on the private in, private insurance companies instead of the social security uh, taking care of, of all this uh, the protection and and uh, well today I was commented with Angel that is uh, there are rumors about the possibility that the government include a proposal of uh, of a reduction or even the the mm, uh, not 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 to have a, a minimum salary. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure. Probably unions will go to the street and and, and will have uh, strikes and everything. I'd also heard recently that there's going to be a reduction in social security. Yeah, has been already implemented. Yesterday. Yes, it's, it's yes. a reduction. That, it's, that does really well. It's for yeah, new, that's true. For new, yeah. for new, uh, new um, contrataciones. New, new jobs. Yeah. New jobs. New jobs. New jobs that will last for three years. You have a flat rate of 100 euro in social security, which is good. And while this this uh, that you mentioned is, is just a rumor, the fact is that the the, pre the current government is moving forward to adapting the labor regulations to what is uh, common in Europe, and uh, and and they will. Uh, we are convinced that they will do that in the, during, the, during the, the time that they still have in the government, despite the fact that this will mean a price in, in vote uh, for uh, next elections. And if the government change for next elections, they will not step back because all the, all the dirty work has already been done, so they will not, they will not step back. Just, just to finish off, personally, I think it's the biggest thing they should do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's liberalizing the labor Just to, one question there to the gentleman in the middle, close to the aisle, and then I'll move to, to the gentleman behind. My name is Hannes Schwarz, and I, I never had to do with Spain, but I am a tax advisor in Switzerland, a customer there, and we have to stand now a wonderful holiday resort in a beautiful garden. So I got to run this resort for a few months. And what I saw is the labor market, as you said, well, there has been an improvement, but it's like a person who say he cannot walk, he cannot hear, and he cannot see. And now after the reform, he cannot walk, he cannot uh, hear, and he can see a little on one eye. Compared to other countries, that's nothing. And then there's another problem, and I would like the audience to answer me a little bit about your opinion. My opinion in Spain is that the government people and agencies in some areas they all know each other. And one looks in your books, I make control. You see, they earn a little bit. The next one comes, we make a control of the swimming pool, you have a small fee. The other comes, we make a control of the building. We charge a small punishment. The third one, you have dismissed this person. He was working in the other restaurant while employed with you, but you don't really cannot prove, so we give you a punishment. So they try to find out, like in real communist, it's the last communist country in Europe. Nah. <laughs> France is worse. <laughs> France is even worse. My question is, do you think these methods will stop? Uh, well, according to, re to the burden of regulations, try to operate a hotel in Belgium, <laughs> for instance. Valencia problem is it was um, very clear. I mean, it's uh, a situation on oversupply, and uh, there, there were a lot of, you know, uh, uh, new hotels uh, built at that time. You know, there were supposed like uh, the big events like Formula One and those events uh, that at the end of the day they didn't, uh, you know, gave the results that expected to have. And also, what happened is in that situation, uh, the hotels you know, uh, went down a lot with the prices and, you know, made a, 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 the situation didn't allow the investors to have a, a good return and even, you know, some of the hotels were suffering and, and having loss, losses for that situation. Now what is happening is uh, it's a city which is recovering, uh, at least it's stable. Uh, it has a very m well mix between the corporate and leisure, but also it's a destination which depends a lot on the national demand and you know that the, until the national demand is, is, not, is not going again and growing again, uh, it's going to take some time till, till recover. But I mean, from our point of view and uh, the properties we have uh, in there, we are seeing that you know there is a, a positive uh, outlook in the in the future for the properties in, in Valencia. Well, uh, yes, sir.
be right but a lot like Canary Island, which is meant to be a ship destination alternative and it could be much much uh, better. Canary Island is no. not, it's not a very cheap destination. You think so? You have you have very expensive hotels in the Canary Islands. It's, it's, they have a very good mix, and it's a, it's an area which is uh, booming. Mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, two, three years, but we have very nice products there with uh, uh, with uh, room rates around 300 euros, 400 euros. We so have, it's, it's yeah, absolutely, we have a property in there which is the Grand Melia Palacio de Sora, and you know the numbers are fantastic. It's an all-inclusive uh, product, and it's it's performing pretty well. And I mentioned, uh, of course, I mentioned Palma de Mallorca, but the thing which Mallorca is, I catalog Palma de Mallorca as a mix. Um, destination because you have you know the leisure and the corporate business. The only concern and the only question that I have with regard to, to that area is the, the seasonality. Once you know we break this point of the seasonality, I think the the, 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 the market is it's you know it's going to be better. But anyway, Balearic Island have performed pretty well. You know we are, we have uh, 19 properties in in the Balearic Islands and we have seen that you know the numbers and the the, 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 the demand that we can cap is, is fantastic, and all of our colleagues on the, for the other for the other hotel management company uh, think they, or believe they, they, or they are thinking the same. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that there are still um, destinations in Spain that would need repositioning that that are you know low price destination and they only compete with price and 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 not more than that, uh, and they need investment. Uh, today there is not a lot of money to pour into these regions. Uh, the, the local authorities don't have the money they, that, that would be required for new infrastructure. Uh, there's no credit and loan for the operators and, and for the owners of the hotels to, to refurbish. But there's definitely an underlying pressure, so I would expect some of these destinations to, for example now and with so much international money uh, wanting to come into Spain, that they take these opportunities. I don't know how many private equity funds that I've been speaking to during these days, saying that they are looking for exactly that type of opportunity. You know, hotels, run down resort hotels that they can come in, you know, refurbish and, and, and open up again. So um, on one hand, we have that. On the other hand, that the, the owners want to do the refurbishment once they get loans to do so. So, so we would expect uh, in the next couple of years a continued improvement on many of these destinations, apart from the very good results that many of these destinations actually do achieve today. Sorry, and so I have to mention gentleman. as well that there is a support from the local government, for example, in, in, the, in, in Palma de Mallorca, where we have a rebuild an area which was very dated and we have a problem with the, with the lower price and the, and the lower people going there, which is called Magaluf. Uh, with an investor, we create a joint venture and uh, we reposition two properties in the area. And it was, you know, with our uh, capacity and as a management company, then we took a joint venture with another international company that understand what's a management agreement. And then with the authorities that, you know, allow us to, to make the refurbishment and to try to recover the area. Uh, we work together and, uh, and we have, you know, a very, very um, successful business case in Magaluf in which the, the, the average room rate of the hotels went double, uh, you know, in the last two years. Uh, of course, it, the investment was uh, a huge investment because we create like a new concept. We went with Nikki Beach uh, with uh, the new Soul brand. And, uh, but at the end of the day, we have seen the results and we are very happy with them. I, I, th I think in Spain, there is a lot of potential opportunities in order to reposition areas which you know could could be converted into into a very well known resort destinations a good example is Ibiza where there is has been a conversion of all the playa de Bosa area uh, with uh, very successful products like like Ushuaia and now Hard Rock is going there with two hotels as well and and the while well, the average rate in Ibiza has has tripled so I'll probably have to cut it Coming close to the last questions. I just wanted to mention, I wanted to thank all the panelists for supporting Spain and investing in Spain. I'm from the Canary Islands, and I would like to say more that the Canary Islands, uh, right now, we're breaking records. We have spent 12 million tourists in the last couple of years, and uh, there is many investment opportunities. The government is not allowing any, any investment that's not for a five-star hotel property, so there's no more four stars that are being allowed, and there's also a lot of injections for um, reformations, right, of old hotels that are uh, reformed. So even banks are supporting it, the government is giving uh, lots of benefits. So 
anyone that wants to talk about the Canary Islands, please come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in that case, um, señoras y señores, thank you very much for, for coming. Uh, most of all, I'd also like to thank uh, the panel for, well, for dealing with me over the last couple of days. And <laughs> um, but it's been you. a great pleasure, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>